you win, then you're expected to do it again. It's it's quite a burden to carry, you know, because you know if you make the next step, then if you get third, the next one, or well, why didn't you win again, huh? Yeah, I think just from being around it for so long and like watching and obviously watching all the racing, you kind of pick up on that. And I love being like I work so well being the dark horse. Like I love, I thrive off of just proving people wrong. Like yeah. I absolutely love it, and it's. I felt like at the time it's the only way I could perform. So, yeah, and eventually, obviously, Rachel didn't turn, like, she got injured, and we are in Liyang. So this was my first World Cup win. Obviously, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. And I said to, I was on a spin with Manon, and I, I said to her, I was like, oh, like, and I had qualified second, I think, and I was just like, look, I can't even do it when she's not here. I said to Manon, <laughs> I was just like, this is ridiculous. I'm just not destined to win. Like, I, And then I remember sitting in the start gate and I was just like, right. I was like, if you don't do it now, it's never going to happen. I li- I put so, I didn't put any pressure on myself. I was like, if you don't go out there, if you don't pedal out the start gate now and want to win, then like, when are you going to want to win? Okay. So, and then I won. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. I was just going to say, it, felt, it didn't feel like, I just felt like I had to win there because if I didn't, with Rachel not there, you know, no disrespect to the other girls, but I had such a thing in my head about Rachel that if I didn't win there, then there was no way. It wasn't, I don't know, I feel like almost the thing that I had in my mind was non-existent because even if she's not there, then I can't win. So, but yeah, after that, it felt a bit like everyone was like, yeah, well done. And I was kind of at home like, well, now I've got the bigger thing to do, which is win when she's there. Yeah. For me, it was just a relief. Yeah, I was gonna. I was actually about to say it. Sometimes it, even though people... If you're not at a race, you haven't won one. Like it's sometimes these results become more of a, le- a relief when you're so expected or, you know, you're the number one on paper to win. And uh, you, you've sh- quoted to say you like you, you learn so much from your losses and you, you're appreciative of them. And it seems like that building of getting second and just trying to improve yourself has really helped you in your career. And, and you quote and say it didn't feel like a win to you. And I mean, that's your you're quite self-critical and a lot of athletes are and I think it's quite a double-edged sword but you think that has really helped you to get to where you are that you're not really satisfied most of the time or any of the time really Mm. I think it's only natural isn't it that humans are never happy with what they have and we always want more thinking that that's what's going to make us happy okay and obviously over the past few years having a sports psychologist and um I don't know kind of reflecting on what what actually where I find happiness in riding I think it's it's just obviously I wouldn't have been out I I don't know you can't ever go back and be like oh if I'd have done this differently maybe I would have like won more maybe I would have won less like you just don't know but I know that I love competing like I love the whole process of a race no matter like no matter what even when I'm out riding like I I have had to learn to kind of have fun outside of races and I have done that with the boys and that's really fun. But where I thrive most, where I enjoy myself most and people don't seem to get it, but I just love races. Like, I love being there. I love having the practice limits. I love figuring stuff out, putting the piece of the puzzle together. So I feel like I'm just always going to be critical of my performance and even though I know there's so many performances that I'm happy about, but if I don't want to improve, then I just don't feel like there's anything to gain. Like the the flame will kind of fizzle out. You know, that's what I enjoy mm. is finding the pieces of the puzzle and improving myself each time. So, yeah, I try not to be like critical of myself, but I like to find, I just love puzzle solving. So, so you <laughs> but, oh, well, the, next time I'll, I'll do this a bit yeah. better. So that's what drives you is even if you did win, you can say, I think we can do that better. Okay, I mean, now I'm understanding more and, and I think that's what makes you the champion you are is is to not be too hard on yourself, like emotionally, say you're working on that with your psychologist, I would assume, but also it's like a, you're so excited to find, oh, okay, we can fine tune that a little bit or I'm not strong enough in that or my technical, that writing. That, that's fascinating. That's a dangerous thing to have. For your other, for the competitors out there, that's for sure. And um, was there excitement or was there relief when you did manage to make a win when Rachel was there? Well, I mean, what's that emotional uh, roller coaster like? Um, it took a while. So, 
well, I can't even remember the one after that. I think it was Mons and Anne. And again, Rachel was coming back from her shoulder. But I do feel like there was a bit of a turning point there because I felt like, like, Rachel's, a, she's insane, but, you know, everyone has their way of dealing with things and dealing with races. And obviously I've raced Rachel long enough now to know what she's like at races and vice versa. So I, feel, I felt like at the time I, I kind of had to like block everything out. So I started turning my phone off because I, I couldn't deal with the way um, other competitors would talk about their racing or it would affect me. It would kind of be like, as much as I can, can be friends with them, I didn't want their performances or their words to get to me. So I had to turn my phone off and just block all of that out. And it wasn't only them. It was it was also, you know, Vital, Pink Bike, like all those other things that would, yeah. you know, sometimes word things. Like, I don't know, I would have the sickest day practice and, you know, the caption would be, Tracy Hannah on fire, here's Tani in the rock garden. Like simple things like that. Mm. It's just would really affect me mentally. And, you know, it's no one's fault, but I had to act on that. So I just turn my phone off, whatever. And then in, in Mont St. Anne, um, yeah, I had the best run of my life. I think to date, probably the best race run um, in my career. Um, just because I think I knew I could win at this point. Rachel was back. It kind of, I had this insane fire inside me. I just, that I remember getting down from my run and, and thinking that's either going to be really shit or really fucking good. Like, I just didn't know. Like, because it was so smooth. And it was just, I enjoyed every second of it. Like, I enjoyed riding my bike. I was like, I said to Dad, I was just like, I have no idea if that's good or bad, but I had so much fun. Like, that was insane. It was just so smooth, so, like, calm, collected, and I was just ready for it. And I feel like that's the feeling that I try and... I don't try and get it each time, because if I'm trying to find that feeling, then I probably won't get it, but that's how I imagine winning is supposed to feel. 